I dub thee a nerdy knight of the round, sworn defenders of all who oppress the nerd. Now, on to the round table. Listen to what they say, for their words will guide you. It's another nerdy night as my round table joins me, Ben, the ridiculous Riddick, and my co-host Sam, DJ Fluffkins Chen, and Mike, the producer slash abuser, DeMarco. <laughs> that's not You know what, Mike? Good. That's his comic hero that. name. That we're we're gonna work on that name. Yeah. Work on that. I think so. <laughs> Tonight we discuss the power of reviews in video games, the unification of the Microsoft system, and the current state of superhero movies. But before we do that, let's go to Sam for the news. The Division, you know, that game you'll be playing by the time you listen to the show, released a series of videos entitled Agent Origins. These videos are meant to show the different team members of a Division team being called in after the viral outbreak hits. These videos are extremely well done and have the certain air of story. We have to. P.S. Destiny sucks. Yes, story. A whole six story missions more than Destiny. And a lot more text. Uh, Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? We'll find out later tonight, won't we, Sam? Yeah. Um, YouTube's Everywhere rejoiced this week as it was announced that they could now qualify to win an Emmy. Awards will be handed out for Best Acting Performance in a Short Form Original Series, Best Short Form Original Series Comedy or Drama, and Best Short Form Original Series Reality or Nonfiction. Don't expect... Don't expect to see PewDiePie there at the awards show, though, as these will only be given out with the technical awards no one cares about. You know, except for all of the technical stuff you do, Mike. We care. We care. We care. We do. We, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> we care so much we, we had to put you on the show. That's true. <laughs> we forgot what your face looks like. Yep. <laughs> the Madden Curse lives on in an entirely new sport. UFC 196, which happened this last weekend, saw Conor McGregor defeated in the second round. That teamed with Ronda Rousey's loss earlier in the year has EA's marketing team contemplating quitting their jobs and making money on sports betting. You know, wouldn't that be something like fixing it, fixing sports betting, though? I feel like, I feel like EA shouldn't be doing that. You just figure it out. You're like, oh, I'm on the cover. Now I got to take a dive. Yep. Uh, it's going to come out in a couple years. Hey, but Sam, you know what's exciting? What? Bob Ross is back. Yes. After all the episodes of Bob Ross were streamed over eight days last year on Twitch, a YouTuber has donned the afro and produced an episode of The Joy of Mario Making with Bob Ross. Um, I lost where I was. Fans might ultimately <laughs> be unable to play the level, though, as he failed to make a jump as he spewed a profanity-laced tirade. There were just weren't enough trees. You have to focus on the trees, Ben. And you just and you mountain. gotta you gotta Mario make the devil out of those trees. <laughs> you know, absolutely, absolutely. Games Game of Thrones fans may have to wait until the show actually comes back to air before catching a glimpse of season six. Unlike last year, when the first four episodes were leaked, presumably from critic previews, HBO is cracking down on the shenanigans for its hit show. Here's my spoiler slash prediction for the season. Everyone you love dies. Isn't that The Walking Dead? You know, zombies, swords, it's the same thing. Same thing. Wait, but doesn't The Walking Dead have swords? Maybe. Okay. He's got one. One sword. Got, uh, does it, uh, okay. Okay. Which one has dragons? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie dragons. There we Zom- go. Oh, that's scary. You know, Sam, speaking of reviewers getting the shaft, Ubisoft has confirmed that there won't be any day one reviews of Tom Clancy's The Division. While most diehards got their share of previews from the game's open and closed betas, which boasted 60,000 players besting Destiny by 20,000, we, the Nerdy Knights, believe it's our duty to point out what happened the last time we were denied day one reviews. Assassin's Creed Unity happened. Drop the mic, Ben. Drop the mic. It's done. It's done. (laughs) <laughs> that mic is surprisingly easy to drop yes it is <laughs> Fuller House got a lot more fuller this week as Netflix announced that the nostalgia reboot is getting a second season as much as I love the friend of the show Hunter Pence's cameo in episode 10 
Hashtag pizza fork for life. Pizza fork for life. <laughs> I can't help but wonder what's next for our favorite 90s TV shows. Murder, she tweeted. Family sort of matters. Married with grandchildren. I would just like to throw my vote in for everybody hates Raymond. Yeah, you, that's your right to do so. It's your right to vote. Good. Just like it's everyone's right to vote for Trump. Yeah, buddy. Hashtag make Donald Trump again. Yeah. <laughs> Donald. Trump, Donald Trump. Uh, looks like Fable fans have had their final fantasy as it was announced that Microsoft is canceling the development of Fable Legends. One can only imagine that the developer Lionhead Studios will soon fall as well. But don't worry, fans. At least we're getting scale bound soon enough. Uh, they pushed that to 2017. Wait, what was that? Oh, hey, this just in. Sam, shut up. <sighs> Sad face. Xbox Xbox One's March update is bringing a much-anticipated feature to the console, Enhanced Party Chat. This feature will bring up to 16-player audio chat, which of course can be streamed on Twitch. Great news for gamers everywhere, as this simply confirms society's stereotype. Nerds have no idea what a party is. Hey, hey, Sam, Sam. What comes before Part B? Party! Oh! Uh. <laughs> what did the firefighter name his children? What? What did the Mexican firefighter name his children? Wow. Way to ruin the joke already. What did the Mexican firefighter name his children, Sam? Jose? Jose B. Okay. Oh, come on. All right. Finish this off, Ben. <laughs> uh, fine. While Capcom figures out how to address the most predictable issue ever, quitting to keep your win streak alive, it is turning to fans to address the issue. They are asking gamers to take to the interwebs to publicly, publicly shame rage quitters. Think about it. They're asking people to complain on the internet. Ben uses the internet. It's not very effective. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sad face. Wah, wah. And that's it for this week's news. If you didn't hear it here, it wasn't nerdy enough or funny enough for me to care. Which brings us to my favorite segment of the show, because, you know, the news is cool and all. That brings us to our Active Quest. Um, Active Quest is where we discuss the nerdy things we've been doing in our lives for the last week. And as always, I like to start with my guest. And our guest this week is Mike DeMarco. Mike! Sort of a guest? <laughs> tell me. Yeah, um, I guess so. Man, what have I... I've... I've been doing a lot of editing this week, which is not the norm anymore. But me and Ben started playing Let's Play Podcast. Or started oh, playing yeah, Final Fantasy VII for Let's Play Podcast. And I've Yay. been editing all week. How far in are you guys? We, uh, we um, just left Midgar. Yep. Yeah. We finished Act 1. And yeah. it took it only took 24 episodes. <laughs> yeah. So this you guys don't catch up. Great show. Like Wait, months. how many episodes? <laughs> Why are you cutting the episodes? Oh, so They're like it's... 15 minutes long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Roughly. <laughs> so, um... It's, it's really great, Sam. You're going to have to watch it because, you know, you're going to have to watch through it. I mean, yeah. it, it, it probably makes up for me not playing before Remake comes out. So, yeah. there I'm you okay go with that. I, I mean, okay. it, it's going to be beautiful. Uh, Mike, when can people start seeing some of these episodes? They can start seeing it tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, if you're listening to it now. If you're listening to this on iTunes... Yes. The first couple of episodes are already up. They're there. They are online <laughs> on YouTube right now. Yeah, it's so fantastic. It's going to be great. So yeah, every every uh, oh, every Tuesday, Thursday, yeah, and Saturday there will be an episode up. Oh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. That's every, right. Uh, in the early in the three, morning, so everyone will be able to watch it. Three episodes every week. Yep. You guys, we're spoiling you. Yeah, be excited. Just, just so you know. Hashtag spoiler alert. Hashtag spoiler alert. <laughs> Sam, how about you? What nerdy things have you been up to? So, last Friday, House of Cards was back. Last Saturday, I finished watching all 13 episodes <laughs> in a marathon session. And to um, this day, Ben still has not seen a single episode of House of Cards. Oh, man. Yeah, no. Mike, did you watch it? Um, I am on 8 or 9, I think. So, I'm, I'll, I'll finish it tomorrow. I'll be done with it tomorrow. It's good. It's good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. You you don't know what you're missing, Ben. I, I want to watch it. It's just been one of those. Yeah. I, I could watch this or I could play video games. You could play Final Fantasy VII. Exactly. Let's do both. 
<laughs> just replace the Final Fantasy VII soundtrack. <laughs> House of Cards. That won't get awkward. Yeah, that won't, won't at all. I already tried to make someone's voice, Kevin Spacey's voice, in oh, yeah. Final Fantasy. I think you succeeded mostly. Oh, good. Good. Uh, so, okay, so, I'm really going to listen. What are you doing, Ben? <laughs> you know, um, this last week, I've really just wanted to not play Destiny. Yes. Um, Did you and- succeed at that? Because I'm... I think what we played that? some Destiny. Did you succeed? Because I think we played Destiny. No, we we I I did play a lot of Destiny still. Okay. Um, but the last few days have been really sick, and you might notice that I've still got a bit of a head cold going on. Um, so I started actually playing uh, The Witcher Three again, uh, which God, the game is so good, so good. Game of the year, good. Yeah, game of the year, good for sure. Like, if you haven't played it, I recommend playing it. Um, I'm playing through it right now, and I'm kind of just biding my time. And I'm, I think I'm going to get the, the DLC packs as well, because I've been reading stuff about the DLC, and it's just awesome. And everything that CD Projekt Red has done with that game has been for the gamers. And it's I've never seen a developer so in tune with their, their gamers. Like, it it is just amazing all of the stuff that they do to make the people who play their games happy. Um, So it's it's definitely worth a play. And in my opinion, it's far superior um, than Fallout. Which is sad to say, but... It really is. I wanted Fallout to be so great, but I just... I have not been able to get into Fallout. Yeah. Sad face. But uh, I think that's a good point to just move into our first topic for the night. Um, and that topic's mine, because for some reason I feel like my topic is the first topic a lot. But that's okay. Yeah. Because it's the worst. Uh, wait, what? So my topic this week, um, you know, I, I re-released an article on NKRN.org that I wrote about a year ago on um, the power of review scores, specifically for video games. Um, and the whole article kind of goes into my belief that the review scores are kind of pointless because that arbitrary number that they give it, it's not necessarily the number that you should be looking at when it comes to making your next uh, purchase decision. Um, So I kind of wanted to present to you guys, I I wanted to hear what your thoughts on reviews for video games are. Um, And my first question really is, Sam, do you read video game reviews? Um, in the most literal sense of what you just asked, uh, I don't, I, at best I will watch videos. Okay. I I am pretty much off the reading bandwagon and a lot of that has to do with the content that's out there. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff I I don't care about and I feel like YouTubers try to make it far more succinct and hit what I care about. And, and I think some of it is that they, they don't like. Their scores are like, yeah, you should play this game. And yeah. not like, this is a 3.7 out of 5. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> How about you, Mike? So um, I kind of almost want to say the opposite of that to an extent. So I think there's kind of different levels where a written review is kind of dying off, I think. And it really, in that, in that case, it really comes down to you're not looking for a score you you have people that you like to listen to and then you're seeing what they think about the game and that's just informing your opinion before you play it absolutely um, but then like when you have video reviews they're really kind of picking out and like i almost just watch those just to see gameplay and them talking about the review in the game is kind of just a secondary thing i don't really care uh-huh. what i really go to nowadays personally is a let's play like that gives you an organic what it's like to play the actual game without cutting out the bad stuff. And it's just, you're just seeing a real like session of playing the game. And that gives you probably the best idea of what the game is. When you Mm -hmm. see like a review or a trailer there, you know, a review might just show you the best and the worst, and you're not really getting what the game is most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the trailer of course is just showing you the best stuff. So uh, just a let's play, I think gives you the best sort of overall idea of what you might be getting into. It's funny that you bring that up because when, when I was 
thinking about it more recently, like I used to read video game reviews a lot more than I than I do now. Mm-hmm. But now it's more of a, okay, I'm going to log on to Twitch, I'm going to click on that game, and I'm going to see what streamers are, are playing it right now, and I'm going to watch these people stream it. Yeah. And I'm going to see how they like it. And of course, I have my streamers that, that I, I trust and value the opinion of um, more, than, more than any other like, review. So if, if there's a streamer that I'm watching and they're like, oh my god, this game is so great... Um, then it's going to be a game that I am more likely to purchase. It's kind of um, how I feel about Until Dawn. It's like I wasn't sure Until Dawn was going to be something for me because scary ga- uh, scary movies, scary games, they, uh, they scare me. Um, so I wasn't sure it would be something that I wanted to get, but then I started watching streams of it. Um, and the more I watched it, I was just so much more enthralled yeah. with it. Um, and so- so here's my question for you guys. When you watch like a Let's Play uh-huh. or you're watching someone on Twitch, like what percentage of your focus is on it? I mean, uh, it depends. Yeah. It like, depends. Like, like, like TV show level focus or like music in the background focus? Probably somewhere in between for me. Okay. Um, I, I tend to watch games while I play games. Sure. Um, but I will also have it like on one of my monitors while I'm doing schoolwork. Got it. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, I can't play a game right now, so I might as well watch one. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing that like really gets to me is that like I don't want to watch something. I don't want to have to pay attention for a longer period of time. Right. For me, it definitely depends uh, uh, on what you're trying to get out of it. Like, I'll throw on Game Drums and just do work or whatever, so it's just there on. It's on my TV. Just that's what's playing. But if right. I'm seeking out a game that I want to check out, I'm paying more attention. Like, I watched the, um, I watched, um, was it Game of Regret? I, I, someone played No Man's Sky like yesterday, and I uh-huh. watched like a 30, 40 minute playthrough of it, and I like. I was paying a lot of attention because I wanted to see how it was running and the mechanics and all that kind of stuff and see if I'm, if that's a game I'm going to like, like the actual gameplay loop, which by the way, uh-huh. is, I'm really excited for that game now. Um, but yeah, so it, it can veer either way, depending on what it's just like a TV show. I'll throw on a sitcom when it's just in the background, but if I'm watching house of cards, I'm paying attention. I'm watching right. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, Renegade actor in the chat says that he agrees with us. Twitch or Let's Plays are kind of his preference for uh, figuring out if a game is something that he wants. At least I assume it's a he. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actress. Yeah. It, well, I mean, a- actress is kind of a derogatory term for actresses nowadays. So. Oh really? Yeah. True. Story. Right. True story. Um. Uh, so. One of my my big concerns with people who just look at review scores, like there there are still those people that go, they they look at a uh, at a game and they click on the review and they scroll all the way to the bottom, skipping all of the things that that people <laughs> say about a game, and just read that number, which drives me absolutely nuts because there there are so many games out there that don't get apparently renegade actor just hates us all uh, just bad. just he says all, all just say bad. <laughs> um but i feel like that kind of that kind of ruined some games i mean think of south park stick of truth when it came out oh, um that game overall got like a 7.2 or something like that out of 10 but you still hear people to this day talk about how great of a game that was. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's 7 out of 10. No, one, no one's reading the context as to why that was a 7 out of 10. Yeah. They're just looking at, oh, this was a 7 out of 10. And then let's not even forget that there are games that make more money based on their Metacritic score. Destiny was one of them. Mm-hmm. If Destiny scored over an 8.5, per, uh, 8.5 or an 85%, rating on uh, on Metacritic, they got like something like a $10 million bonus from Activision. 
Yeah, but see, see, here's the thing, and I think you you kind of hit on this. And we talked about this in another uh, segment about reviews a while ago, uh, where I kind of mentioned how I use Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. like AKA, I know what the top is, I know what the bottom is, and in between is subjective. Like you, you, like one of the things you just brought up is this idea that there's so many good games out there. Like, yeah. so here's my thing: if you're not playing a seven point nine. And you choose to play a nine point three, like, aren't you still getting an enjoyment out of it? Yeah, but you you also have the chance to miss another game that you could get some great enjoyment out of. And something that I still see a lot on the internet is the complaint that there aren't games coming out. It's like, well, there are games coming out. Yeah, no, 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 no but, but like scoring lowly, and you're not giving them the benefit of the doubt. But like, th- th- I mean, I but I'm in a similar boat, right? Where like I'm not gaming a lot, and I have I stopped playing Destiny for for the better part of it. Like, I have Dragon Age Inquisition and The Witcher on my account that I've never touched. Right. Both of which are rated very well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I guess it's like you got to look at the different consumer segments and say, like, what's the real concern? That, that people aren't playing every good game that's out there? Or that people like – or that people's preferences are being driven by an established elite in an ivory tower – of game ratings, like what? What? What's the real concern? Well, I I think my my main concern is how because of how reviews have kind of evolved, that developers and publishers are starting to use those reviews as incentives mm-hmm. for games, um, and I feel like that could really start to harm some games in the sense that oh well, you guys didn't score high enough, so you're not going to get a sequel, right? And it ruins, that is it, it my ruins the concept of, um, I can't think of the right word, but like, <clears throat> it, it ruins honesty too. It's like, when, when it comes down to a game that gets marketed to a, to a certain degree, and also is getting reviewed to a certain degree, and that means that game is going to be successful, and a game that doesn't go that route, even though it's great, is not going to be successful, then you're going to start like widening the range of what's good and bad. And it's going to be like, there are great games out there, but they're not going to get made because they're not getting reviewed well and sold. But games that are okay or mediocre are rising to the top, like Call of Duty. <laughs> that always yeah, does no. well, even though okay, okay. the yeah. game's kind of mediocre. No, no, no that, that, that's fair. But like, isn't that a really simple decision for a game publisher to make then? Because, okay, like one, it's not like any of these money, these companies are truly hurting for money, right? Like, not the yes, that can afford the stuff, now. No. But no, no, no. But like, if you're saying spending on the game in a marketing capacity ups its reviews, isn't that just a cost benefit analysis? Like, once I get to Metacritic nine plus, I know I'm going to make a hundred million dollars more on the game. So right. if I spend eighty million on marketing, it's worth it. But then you're edging out anyone that's below, like the big 10 developers, you know, like your EA, your Activision, your Bungie, Blizzard. Like if you start going down into second tier, third tier games, indie developers, they can't afford that. Like they can't even get, they can't even like logically get their hands into all the reviewers that are like making these choices basically of if a game's going to succeed or fail. And so, mean, so, and so what you guys are saying are there's a lot of nine plus indie games that aren't getting graded. Nine plus. Well, there's Actually. that, and there's there's all of the people who see a score lower than eight, and are just like, I'm not going to give nope, that. I'm not going to play it. Yeah, yeah, and and that that mm. is just as harmful as no review at all, in right. my opinion. Okay. And I think you should gather an informed opinion by reading reviews and getting opinions, but I don't think you should ever make a pass or a player pass decision on a review. If you see a game Absolutely. and it interests you, you should play it. Like, check it out. See if you like it. And if you do like it, yeah, no, no. share share that you like it and share why you like it so that other people can maybe latch on to that. And here's the thing. If you're worried about not being able... I mean, the, the big thing about, about reviews, and I understand people make their, their purchase decisions on it, is places like GameStop and Target and Best Buy, they don't allow you to return a game if it's opened. Mm-hmm. You know, you can return so many things if they're opened and you don't like it. Like, you can return your dog's food 
half empty and say, oh, my dog didn't like this and get a full refund for it. But you can't return a video game within X amount of time um, because you didn't like it. This is this is this is why video game reviews can be so important to people because they're spending 60 bucks and they they can't return it. But there are still other options for them out there. I mean, if you're not going to buy the game new, I know you're only saving $5 buying it used, uh, but you do at least get a 7-day return policy with GameStop, right? Yeah. Mike? That's right. Yeah. And then Redbox is great. You know, you go to a red box, you rent a game for a day, find out if you like it, and then you can go buy it yourself. And you're only you out know, like an extra dollar fifty or two bucks or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Ben, do you ever remember? Do you, were you in Florida when there was still a store called Rhino Games? I've never heard of Rhino Games. Me okay. Rhino Games was this awesome store, and their store policy was you could return a new game. Within a set period of time, I think it was seven days, maybe it was 14, but you'd only get store credit. And it was under the understanding that when you bought a new game, it doesn't necessarily come prepackaged. Because there's a potential that you are buying a new game that's already opened. Gotcha. They went out of business, now replaced by GameStops. But, like, I kind of like that policy. And I, and I kind of wish companies did like. I, I kind of feel like more people would go to GameStop if they had a more generous policy like that. Yeah. You know, there was another game, uh, video game store near where I lived in, in Florida where you could go and every time a new game came out, they opened one or two copies and they had multiple TVs in the store where you could sit, literally sit down and play a game for a little bit before buying it. That'd be cool. Um, which I, I thought was a, a really... Neat thing, um, and I think that store is still open. Uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I'd I'd have to ask my sister though. That'd be cool. I mean, it, it's things like that. I just there are so many games out there that are considered not necessarily great games that that I wish people gave more credence to. And of course, I cannot, for the life of me, <laughs> think of one right off the top of my head. Because that, go me. That might be a good time to go to the next segment, actually, Ben. I think it's a great <laughs> time to go to the next segment. Yay! And, and, and here Mike is still talking in my ear, telling me when we've gone too long. But now everybody um, can before, hear. <laughs> exactly. Before we go on to the next segment, guys, remember Nerdy Nights Radio is live on Twitch every Monday evening at 7.30 Pacific time. And you can be a part of the show as well by participating in the chat. Uh, just like Renegade Actor. Can. Oh, Renegade Actor actually just told me what it was. It's called Play and Trade. Uh, right. Play and Trade is, is oh, the store. I remember that remember store. That. Yeah. In Florida. I definitely do remember that store. That lets you play before buying. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, you can participate in the chat like Renegade Actor. Um, you can also find the show on YouTube um, at www.nkrn.org forward slash YouTube. And of course, you can download us on your favorite podcasting service of choice. Um, so let's move on to our next topic, and that's Sam's topic. Sam, tell us what, what we're talking about. So my topic at a very high level is Microsoft's world takeover plan. Um, <laughs> and basically, within the last couple of weeks, Microsoft announced a couple of things, which I think the conspiracy theorist to me is really just saying this is their play to take over gaming as we know it. So the first thing that they, they kind of floated was this idea that they wanted to develop an upgradable console, uh, specifically with the intent to like get rid of console generation. So a PC. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Um, a PC in a console box form. So a PC. Which, I mean, let's so be fair. PC. Uh, that's what they should have done with the original Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Um, and then they also announced that they were going to develop this unified Windows platform, which which I guess was like a is a replacement for their failed. Games, games with Windows, Windows Live. Live or something like that. Yeah. Um, and essentially what they were saying is they're going to set up a new set of like criteria rules, all these different things for developers in order to require them to make a game that is both compatible for standard Windows PC and Xbox at the same time if they wanted to publish in 
the Microsoft store or whatever. Um, which sounds like a kind of good idea until you like listen to developers who are like, fuck you, Microsoft. We're not going to do this because this is just your play to like try to take over in a way that we, you know, like to kind of create a closed environment that we don't want to have to play in. Um, just, just to make it harder, just to make it better for you to compete. This is them trying to break a stick in Steam's ass. Like it, it by, by locking the system. So in a way, is it though? Like, I, I'll, I'm completely honest. I haven't done a lot of research into what developers were saying and what Microsoft is saying, but just from the basic sound of things, it's creating a one track to create a PC, a Windows, a Windows game, and an Xbox game without having to basically port. Like that's what it sounds like. So, what's really the issue? So I think part of it is that entire process changes right. between the two systems as, as it is now. Um, and, and I think the other issue is that it's it's conforming to a set of r- specific rules in how they develop that doesn't give them full – that basically doesn't give um, – that doesn't give the developer as much control as they had before. And to I, make those sh- I think I mean, the other problem with this is that – the, the PC gamer is going to kind of suffer because the developers are forced to kind of reduce their quality to the console standards. Yeah, like, I, common denominator. It's like I, I am a console gamer more than I'm a PC gamer, but I do fully understand that playing on a PC is far superior than playing on a console. And by them doing this, they... The developers already have this this community with the PC gamers, and they're going to almost ruin it by creating this lowest common de- denominator. But see, I don't even see that being required either. Imagine, imagine you load up a PC game and you go into your graphics settings just like you already do, and you have like minimum, middle, maximum, and custom. Now there's a new option that is Xbox One or Xbox. And when you're playing on Xbox, that's the setting it goes to, no matter what, because that's the one it has to play on to run on the console. But otherwise, that sounds like a lot PC, of work to add add in another option, though. Yeah. Well, so, so they already here's do the it. thing, Mike. It's literally a preset of all the other settings, but it, to run. Yes, on Xbox. but what goes into making that preset? It's not like, oh, let me have this on button, and that'll just make everything work all of a sudden. It is actually when you go into the graphics settings on a PC game. And it's got all the anti-aliasing settings and the resolution settings, and it's the Xbox preset would be a preset of all of those settings to run on Xbox. That's all it is. Yes, but every game would be required for an Xbox game to have those settings inherently in them. Right, but that also Whereas, means, that also means every PC game that comes out for Windows would run on Xbox, which is really cool. For the console gamer, not for the PC gamer, that is going to have to wait an extra God knows how long for them to figure all this out, or. In the honest to God, most likely scenario, the developer just says, "Fuck you, Xbox. I'm just going to make this game for PC and PlayStation." That makes no sense because if they're no, 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 it's already going to work. That's the point. They're not going to have that option anymore. That's what they're saying. So so basically, it's either going to be on PlayStation or not on Steam as as their uh, as their platform, though. Windows games are on Steam. That's not a that's not a deal breaking issue. uh, I understand that, but you can't. Now, the problem is that Steam wants to do Linux. That an Xbox game will work in Steam. They're going to make a proprietary platform on the Windows system, right? And you can have both. That as your well, Xbox, like I do right now. I have games for Windows Live, and I have Steam, and I have Origin, and they all coexist fine. <laughs> I'm not saying that they don't coexist fine. I'm saying. Th- the developer is not required to support yeah. the Windows platform if they support Steam. Yeah. Technically, but you can, I mean... You, you can if make you're, a if Mac you're making game a, for Steam. If you're making, yeah, you can and make you a can, Max game for Steam and say, fuck you to Xbox. Right, but why, I mean, why would you do that? Because you're alienating most of the PC gamers. Already, okay. there are games you that only run how on iOS Wait. works, right? <laughs> yes, but already there are games that are only on Mac. There are games that are on PC. There are games that are on Linux. What games, games, games are only on Mac? Very few. Not mostly iOS <laughs> games. 
but uh, Steam the, supports so, all so, of so, these so, platforms. So basically, I think uh, I, I, you know, in, in kind of doing background reading on this, uh, hold on, that's it. It, it basically developers are worried that they're going to use this to kind of create a monopoly. Yeah. And because because this this unified Windows platform is going to be closed, uh-huh. so developers will have to license, will have to be licensed by Microsoft in order to distribute games using this platform, which means basically Microsoft can control the sale of PC games and apps and make them only available on Windows Store. Yep. I mean, I mean, that's I don't not very different that actually from what happening. I was saying. <laughs> like. Steam, Steam no, no, I, I think, do that. I think it's, it's what you were saying, just worded differently. Yes. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't see that happening, because, like, already right now, if an indie developer wanted to make a game and put it on Steam, and Steam says no, then what, like, what are they going to do? They're going to release it on their website. Like, that's all they could do. I mean, it's not... I, I don't know. I don't see the issue. Like... This, this seems a lot more harmful to Microsoft than helpful. In my opinion, um, well, I, I think, I think it made, seems helpful. I think to they're Microsoft trying to make a play like, they made, like Apple's made. What it sounds like be... could really happen, which would be the real fear, is that if a game is going to be on PS4 and PC, say like um, No Man's Sky, mm-hmm. and now to be on PC, <laughs> they are required to also run on Xbox. When PlayStation owns stake in No Man's Sky, that means they won't be able to play on PC because they're not going to let it play on Xbox. But the, that could happen. Microsoft, I don't. It doesn't sound like Microsoft is requiring that you play games only on the Microsoft platform. You could still download, like you were saying, No Man's Sky from a different platform outside the Microsoft platform. Right, but if they were running wanting to run on like games for Windows Live, because that's a PC platform, that's what I'm My saying. Question is, I'm saying why would they happen. want to do that? I, that's what I'm saying. They won't. So I don't see any of these issues popping up. See, oh, okay. But the issue I see popping up is more developers saying that exact thing. It's like, well, why do we want to do that? Like, what is the point of us making this something that works on both Xbox and PC? Because it gives them more a bigger pie to sell to. Okay, let's, let's look at a PC-only game. Uh-huh. Let's look at, uh, what's a PC-only game? Five. Civilization Five. You're telling me that Civ Five is going to release on this Windows platform because uh, even though they have to now make something that runs on Xbox. Like well, I don't, I don't, I don't see the do, problem. Let, let me ask you another, if they create let, a preset ask. and settings that makes it run on that allows the Xbox to handle okay. the game, so, and they so, let you so have let's con- ask the, which is keyboard work for the developer. No, 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 hold on, Mike. Let's ask the direct question. Why mm-hmm. isn't Civ Five on Xbox? Probably because they don't care. Because they wanted to be on Because the developers don't want money? No. That's not the reason. Right. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> there's there's got to be a reason that they're not doing it now, right? I mean, sure. But what's preventing them from not doing it? Like, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> if they want to be like, are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying to make a Windows game, it's got to run on. It has to run through games on Windows, the new games on Windows Live, and run on Xbox. So even if it's through Steam, it has to run on Xbox. No, or does it have to be through Windows platform? Right. So why would? So yeah, new games would be compatible with this if they want to. Otherwise, it's just going to be on Windows and on Steam or whatever. So my my question is still: What is the it? incentive to want to do that? When the when these other developers have been doing Steam for God knows how long, you, okay. because for a Perhaps minimal amount for, more work and investment, they can. Maybe open I'm up not on wording the question platform. right. Okay. Maybe that's what's wrong. I, I think we have to separate the fact that Windows as an OS and the unified Windows platform as a method for Windows to or Microsoft to sell games for Windows and Xbox. Right. So that's what. So this is, are you? Like the point being that if they lock it down and say, "Well, unless no you develop unless for the Microsoft Unified this. Platform, you can't have an Xbox game." So, Civ, if you just want to be on Steam, you can be on Steam, right? But I won't give you access to Xbox. Now, Civ's not a great example of that. But what happens when it when it happens with another game that they don't want to develop that way? I mean. 
If you're making a new and, game, and, why wouldn't you? Well, so so here's here's my argument, right? If Microsoft has that much control, what's the natural thing that they're going to do as a business? Well, they're going to squeeze every fucking every last penny out of the developer because they can say, okay, you know what? We figure out how, this is this is how much money you would have saved if you developed on Steam and Xbox. So we're just going to make it so the difference is like this much, mm. and force you to do it. They're going to eat. They're going to drink your milkshake, Mike. <laughs> drink your indie milkshake. <laughs> Um, so let, let me be honest. The, the way I see this this platform working is, I see this platform working as Microsoft's answer to remote play on Mac and PC for the PlayStation. Like that's how I see the Windows unified platform working for gaming specifically. Sure, all of those PC games you still won't be able to play on the Xbox, but. You can play all your Xbox games on the PC through a streaming component. You mean you mean like now? Yeah, like now. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not going to be any different. Like that is what I see that becoming. And so hopefully that's the case. I mean, right? uh, it wouldn't be terrible. That's what we're hoping. But I I don't I just don't see I don't see it working the other way around. And I don't see I don't see developers looking at this as a, oh, well, this looks like a good idea. Or not necessarily that it looks like a, a bad idea, but, oh, this looks like extra work that I want to put into making this game. I, I, I think they're legitimately worried that the cost of them licensing the game is their soul. <laughs> for, for lack of a better term. If you look at it as the Xbox is just a computer and it's another PC that you can play all these games on, I think that's all it is. Like they're trying to unify the PC market and the gaming and the console market as one thing, which is what Steam machines tried to do and they failed because they opened it up way too much. In this case, Microsoft has the only machine and it's the Xbox, and that is your that is your console PC that's on your TV, and you're they're hmm. unifying the two. That's all it is. That's how I see it. It'll be interesting to go back and. Mike, you and at least you and I have a discussion about this after it's uh, gone into full swing because I feel like you and I have successfully hijacked Sam's topic. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Yay! That's so our job, right? Is to bring a good topic to the table for everyone else to bitch about. <laughs> so, real quick, before we switch topics. Yeah. I'd just like to point out that my conspiracy theory is Xbox is losing to PS4, and this is Microsoft's desperation play. Oh, yeah. absolutely. No, I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. Don't forget to catch us (laughs) on our other shows throughout the week. Uh, My sister Anna and I host a comic book club show that will air very in in the near future every Wednesday. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you can catch Mike hosting the Nerdy Nights Let's Play podcast. And there's probably some more stuff that's going to be live. I just don't want to share it with you yet. Uh, For all these shows and more, visit www.nkrn.org. And that brings us to our final topic of the evening, and that topic is Mike's topic. Mike, tell us what your topic is. So I want to talk about superhero movies, and I I have two sort of routes I want to talk about. But first, let's talk about how awesome Deadpool is. Because God knows we've talked about superhero movies a lot on this podcast. (laughs) Of course. But I hope to bring special insight, (laughs) because it's me. I wrote about... Johnny Storm being black, obviously. You did. Um, That's a great article also that you can find oh, on you. www.nkrn.org. It's uh, Mike's review of the, fanta- the newer Fantastic Four movie, um, which, if you haven't read it, it is absolutely worth the read. Um, I, would, I haven't seen the movie. I read the review, and I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> this is all I needed. <laughs> Circling <laughs> back to the reviews earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Deadpool was amazing. I think we all have seen it and agree. It I've seen great. it twice. I haven't seen so. it yet. I want to watch it. it yet? Oh, man. Oh, well, man. I mean, we're not I'm, talking I'm about... Lazy. We're not actually going to talk about Deadpool. But So Deadpool was a rated R superhero movie, comic book movie, yep. and it was it was expected to make like 35 <clears throat> to 50 was like the estimated range, million dollars. And it made like 200 <laughs> million the first weekend. It was insane. So, of course, it, Hollywood... It, go ahead. It's in the top five highest grossing rated R movies of all time. Yeah, easily. Yeah. So, obviously Hollywood... Maximum effort. Um, ...went for it, and now 
every movie, every comic movie you could think of is now being trying, like, attempted to be converted to rated R. And they're going to try and capitalize on the fuck hilarious. out of this. Which is totally overcorrection of what they should be doing. But, mm-hmm. needless to say. So, I think the main one I want to talk about is that this this week some news came out that um, Batman v Superman, which I'm sure we're all also very excited to see, <laughs> um, they cut out two characters from the theatrical cut of the movie. Oh, one, two? I only read one. But the, the big so one, go, the big one is what's her face? Who we still don't know. But she's probably playing Robin, and now she's been cut out of the movie. No, no, they said she's not playing Robin. So. So what if they heard that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm trying to point out that they, they, yes. they said we're going to get her character in the director's cut of the Blu-ray. Yes, not and yes. I think they said it wasn't going to be Robin or Batgirl. Sure. Um, but, <laughs> You're like I don't believe them. <laughs> but yes. So in the theatrical cut, they cut out two characters, and then they're going to add them back in to this extended R-rated physical release that comes out later. Ooh. So. I, guess, I, I What do you guys think about this this concept of let's make everything so really, rated R? Even if it wasn't planned to be R from the beginning, we can make it rated R because this movie's not out yet and we can change it. Um, so real quickly, I'd like to I'd I'd like to throw something out. Um, I got I got a tweet a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. twelve days ago. Um, uh, Danny Wiesner, friend of the show. Um, Awesome musical creator. If you got to look him up, Danny Wiesner. Um, he tweeted at me. He says, "Am I correct in thinking that the world doesn't actually want an R-rated bat slash superhero movie?" At be ridiculous. You're my resident comic guy. Tell me. And here's the thing: Deadpool worked as a rated R movie because that's the only way that Deadpool could have worked. Like there is no way that the Deadpool movie would have been good. If it could not have been rated R, if so, anyone, I mean, could have been good. It would so have been what, what rated R? Was it, how, how, I'm, I'm assuming language was part of it. Language is a huge part of it. Language, um, violence, sex. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I mean, but, I but, that's so, it, but it's a lot of it. But the, was the other stuff so far beyond what a PG-13 is? Yeah, yes. it was like way beyond. Okay, okay, okay. The PG-13 that's movie is. Absolutely. I, need, I need to go see it. I need to go see it. Like, let's mm, just fair. say this: if you made a drinking game for every time Deadpool said dropped an f-bomb, you would be dead by the end of the movie. I mean, no, no, yeah. that, that 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 I expected. <laughs> <laughs> that that I fully expect. <clears throat> um. But a uh, renegade actor brings up the gore. I mean, there there's some really there's some really <laughs> big things in there, and of course, chimichangas. You can't have chimichangas and it be rated PG thirteen. Yeah. Um, so, Deadpool could not have worked well as a PG thirteen movie. It worked as a rated R movie because that is the character of Deadpool. Suicide Squad is going to work well as a rated R movie because those are the characters of the movie. Like that is the essence of what that is. Is it R though? R though? Or did they I decide they were making? I think it was PG thirteen, but I, there's been rumors of them making it R for the release because of what happened with Deadpool. It's another okay, well, I, I think it should be rated R. Um, it up. But super Superman and Batman. These are two two of DC's like shining examples of goody two shoes in existence that I cannot, I, if they were to make their characters rated R versions of themselves, they would not be true to the character that DC has made. And they're just, in that case, they would be alienating the audience. They would be reducing the size that's going to see the movie or is, is going to see the movie and then be just disappointed because the parents or whatever took them to see it. Just like what happened with yeah. Deadpool. Oh my god, this last time I saw Deadpool. It would cause more problems than anything. This last time I saw Deadpool, by the way, family behind us, literally every time boobs were on the screen, close your eyes, honey, close your eyes. Oh, jeez. It's like, that's hilarious. Why did you do this to me? And then why did you sit behind me? Every time I go to a movie. uh, Maybe because you look like a wholesome white guy. Apparently. Maybe if you like mohawked your hair, they would not sit behind you. Maybe. I mean, if I if I fohawked my hair, they wouldn't be able to see over my head, so they definitely wouldn't. There you go. Me. Yeah. As of one day ago, Suicide Squad is confirmed to be PG thirteen. They're not going to oh, be R. Well, then I stand corrected on that. Yeah. But that is another movie. If I, 
if DC were going to make one of their movies rated R, that is the one that I could see being made rated R. There aren't many superheroes out there that I could say, oh, yes, their movie needs to be a rated R version Mm -hmm. of, of themselves. It's like, yes, a Superman movie rated R. That's like putting Spider-Man out there and rating it R. It's like, so counterpoint, which I think is a good idea. The final Hugh Jackman Wolverine movie rated R. That's fine with me. That's another character I could see working out that so way, too. just for the sheer, just for the violence behind the character. And it, yep. and here's the thing: any any Marvel character that they have made a Max comic about, um, so Wolverine, Punisher, mm-hmm. Deadpool, those are the big three Max comics that they've had. Yeah, those are the three that should be rated R. And those the Max comics are rated R comics. I mean. I don't know if you've if either of you guys have had a chance to read Deadpool Max, Punisher Max, or Wolverine Max. No. Okay. <laughs> you well, know I don't read comics. <laughs> okay. This to. is why we have a comic book show. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> so there are specific characters that would work, but there aren't a lot of them. Exactly. Because comic books aren't meant to be just for one person. The rated R movies should be like what we've already seen: Watchmen, Kick Ass, yep. um, Blade. Yeah. Um, I, I, if they do a Swanson Hulk movie, Hulk versus rated R. rated R says Renegade actor. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. So anyway, before we run out of time, let's go on to the second track that I wanted to talk about. Wait, and... does Sam want to add anything to oh, this? Oh, yeah. Because How about you, Sam? I feel what like we've, we've been cutting Sam out a lot, and I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. No, I, I think, I think you, you, you guys have hit on definite points. Like, Rated R isn't, isn't a marketing gimmick. Yeah. Like, yeah it, that's, it's that's a reality of what the content is. Yep. Thank you. Long story mm. short. Sam put it a lot more eloquently than I did. Eloquently. Much, much smaller and succinct. Eloquently. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Witcher 3 on the mind. I'm just thinking about Gwent. Gwent. Um, so this, this, other, this other route is um, not that long ago. I know Sam mentioned it a little while ago. but uh, I did. Um, DC had – I don't think it was DC. I think it was WB specifically. But yeah, there, was was some, there was some news that came out that they mentioned – taking some jabs at Marvel saying that Mar- the people that watch the Marvel movies, they're not sophisticated enough to follow these justice league movies. So I took offense to that <laughs> pretty heavily. Um, to, to, say, would... to, 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 to think that these are, there are two completely different camps of people watching these different movies is insane. It's one yeah. big group of nerds that watch all of them. <laughs> And, and here, here's what I really want to know. Yeah. I, w- I, want, I really want to hear Sam's reaction to this mm-hmm. because, Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't really read comic books. I don't. Mike, you at least have some background in reading some comics. Right. I read comics all the fucking time. Um, so We cover the spectrum. I mean, <laughs> that, that statement offended me in the way of a... Do you really think I just read one version of comics? That's like DC saying, hey, if you're into Marvel comics, our comics might not be for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's just not right. So I'm curious what Sam, the plain comic, books, comic book movie viewer, gets from this statement. So I, interestingly enough, I think the statement has merit. Um, and, and maybe it's just a different interpretation of, of where I'm going, but like, let, let's think about what you kind of just said in the defense of like the goody two shoes superhero stuff, right? Where there, where it's basically saying like, look, I'm serving you superheroes in a very standard way. They're good. These are the good guys. Everyone else is bad guys. Good guys, bad guys. And if you start to incorporate areas where your heroes maybe aren't as definitive as like an anti-hero, but have the complexity that doesn't make it that straightforward. Like some people might show up and be like, well, actually I was just expecting the superhero to be like this pure good guy. I'm not sure I can handle the other side of it. Now 
I mean, I mean, and I and I think you could probably draw a similar parallel between a lot of mo- like film adaptations of books, where you're saying like, well, the stuff that you cut out was like more creative character development that had a better had more depth to the character. You oversimplified characters, like that could be a fair argument for for movies out there, and that could be what like Warner Brothers is hinting at. I, I, I think the reality of what they said is, let me just downplay expectations for Daughter Justice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that statement. I find, I find what you're saying interesting. So, you, so you're, you're kind of taking the camp of Marvel, the, what Marvel has given us so far are very black and white characters. You've got your White Knights, your Captain America, your Iron Man, your Thor on one side and you've, and you've got your, you know, your black spots on the face of the earth, like Loki and, um, uh, Ultron and so on and so forth. However, when you look at Batman, yes, he's a, he's a good guy, but there, it's a little more complex than that because he doesn't mind, you know, having someone drink out of a straw for the rest of their life. Mm. Um, but I feel but like Batman won't... is the worst example of that because everybody knows Batman and the backstory and everything. There's been seven movies in the past 20 years of Batman. It's like okay. every, yeah. everybody knows he's a cultural phenomenon. He's not someone you need to introduce and explain how deep he is. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with that. And Renegade Actor brings up um, Civil War coming out. I mean, is that... Is that movie going to be too complex for your average Marvel viewer as well? And the character of Black Widow is not necessarily black and white. I mean, she's a good guy, but she was a bad guy. And Winter Soldier. Nolan Batman, I don't think, is a great example because, again, it's Batman. Um, it's I mean, I, I think Nolan's Batman, like, tried to hint at it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, like, there was this other side to it. Like, ultimately, he's still doing the good thing, but, like, that the perception of Batman isn't necessarily something that has to be good good right in order for batman to succeed um but yeah so, i mean um, go ahead. that's fair sorry <clears throat> oh no go ahead so as far as like how you interpreted what they said i felt the opposite i don't feel like they were trying to push down expectations for the movie i felt like they were like they were trying to say well those marvel movies are are there but our movie is way up here Like, it's another level, and you need to come in thinking, and you need to... And the the problem with that is, like, they're trying to say their movie is so deep and dense. But how dense can it be when there's going to be, like, 15 to 20 characters introduced in this movie? Like, that's crazy. I thought, didn't didn't they kind of announce a lineup change alongside... Potentially. Some. I think they did cut a couple characters, and obviously they're cutting... A couple of characters that we knew were going to be in the movie, and now they're not. Um, but I mean, aside from that, like they're they're introducing ninety percent of the Justice League in this movie. Yep. But none of them are going to be important except for Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Like those are the main characters. So they're going to have like Aquaman run onto screen, be like, "I'm Aquaman," and then leave, and then not explain it, and have people leave people confused. <laughs> you know, but that's as well. about as much as Aquaman ever does in the Justice League, too. Let's be well, honest. Sure, but they're also going to do it with the Flash and with the Green Lantern and yeah. with Doomsday and yeah. Lex Luthor and <clears throat> real quick, let's, let's answer going. let's answer this question from the chat. Renegade actor asks, "How dense can it possibly be if they tell you the plot in the trailer?" That's my point. I think it's completely undense. I think it is surface level. You're going to watch Batman punch stuff. You're going to watch Superman punch stuff. They're going to punch Doomsday, and it's going to be over. Yep. And there's going to be a bunch of kids. I I think that was honestly their biggest mistake was showing Doomsday. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we all knew there was going to be a villain that they were going to fight together. But we didn't need to know it was Doomsday this early. And honestly, what, what sucks about that is I... I was pretty much on radio silence for Batman vs. Superman, and I still found out that Doomsday was in it. Yeah. I believe I found out in a very similar way. Yeah. Uh, it, or, or in the same circumstance. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah. Let me be surprised. Yeah. 
so 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 Mike, I, I pulled up, I pulled up one of the uh, mm -hmm. one of the articles, and and, and it says, um, who? Oh, let's see, where does it say this? It I think they said they were going to push forward another Affleck Batman movie. Oh yeah, and yeah yeah yeah, definitely. and and instead of moving forward on Justice League Part One, mm -hmm. which is good uh, for and, them because I do want to see Batfleck as a as an as its own yes thing, but. I think that should have been in the cards originally. If not before yeah. this Batman Superman movie. Yep. At the very least. They could have, I mean... Give me, give me a Red Hood Bat, Batfleck movie. Yes. Oh, man. But, guys, we are, we are running out of time. Yeah. Does anyone mm. want to add anything before... Uh, before we close out for the night. I think I'm good. I ranted enough on the superhero thing, I think. Division in 26 minutes. Division <laughs> in 26 minutes. Um, and real quickly, I just, want, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone that was watching the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can find us all over the internet. You can find Mike on Twitter at Mike, yep. De Mike, Mike V. Mike V. M-A-I-K-V. It's on screen, don't worry. They saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay, yes. good. See, so even phone. when he's on the show, he's still producing it, which is great. We should, uh, we should change your name to Mikey number five. Mikey number five. Uh, you yeah, know, Mikey better. number nine. Uh, 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 uh. You can you also can find never... Sam pretty much everywhere on the internet as DJ Fluffkins. No, really, everywhere, even at www.djfluffkins.com. By the way, I hate you, Xbox. Give me my gamer tag. <laughs> And a very, oh wait, Mike's here. Very special yeah, thanks yeah. to Mike DeMarco, who makes the show look as beautiful <laughs> as it does. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at be ridiculous. That's B-R-I-D-D-I-C-K-U-L-O-U-S. You can follow everything Nerdy Nights related at nerdy underscore nights and on our website, www.nkrn.org. Thanks again, everyone. It's been an excellent night, and I officially dubbed the Nerdy Nights of the Round. Go out and defend the realm of the Nerdy Nights, and until next week, remember, it's dangerous to go alone.